Hey everyone, welcome to Sorted, where we sort all of your favorite fictional characters into their Hogwarts houses. This their is Whitney, place. the rightful place where they belonged the whole time. You know her. <laughs> oh. She was Katniss in everything for a little <laughs> while before we hired Jennifer Lawrence. And to now people Katniss. tell me I don't look anything like her. I see that. She is. She looks just like how I pictured Katniss in my head, which is perfect because today we are sorting your favorite characters from the Hunger Games. We already sorted Katniss and Gale and a few others on my channel. And now, who are we gonna sort first? I think we should start off with my favorite character, Peta. Straight Malark to the Peta. <laughs> Malark Peta, come on, come on up. We're gonna sort you. We're gonna drop that. Big All right. He's your favorite your, character. What house head. is Peta? Well, in? if he's my favorite character, you know that he's gonna be. Go either Hufflepuff or Slytherin. Okay. Peta <laughs> is not a Slytherin. See the argument. I will kick you out of this frame right now. Peta is definitely a Hufflepuff because, first of all, he's great at cooking, he's great at making sandwiches, he's great at finding things, <laughs> and he's great at camouflage. Everybody knows that Hufflepuffs are great at camouflage. Obviously. That's right. Loyal. <laughs> Loyal, patient, patient hardworking. Patient, hardworking. Yes. Well, he is all of those things, though. Who is more loyal in the series? Hufflepuff is than... my first choice. Right. He is a Hufflepuff. Why would you say that he's a Slytherin? Potentially see people arguing it on the basis of the fact that. Peta, more than Katniss, is really good at manipulating people, at showing people what they want to see in the games. Like, he relies, he survives on his ability to lie. And camouflage. <laughs> He does, he does lie. I, I don't think it's ever with a, a malicious intent. Level of ambition and cunning, like the word cunning has a negative connotation to me when you're talking about that like sure, evil sure. Slytherin idea. No, I could I'm gonna get that. in trouble now with, with conflating Slytherin and self evil, but it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. Yeah. I don't think that Slytherins who lie always lie with malicious intent. Look at Narcissa Malfoy, who lied with very good intent. Yep, Peter's a Hufflepuff. Peter's a Hufflepuff. So, Peter Malark, Hufflepuff. <laughs> looks good in yellow anyway. Katniss conflates him with yellow. Peter's is that true? Puff. Yeah. In what? the final book, Peter <laughs> reminds me, Peter reminds me of the yellow of spring, of dandelions. Look at you. That's verbatim, by the way. <laughs> Bantam. Next up. Odair, comma, Finnick. AKA, who's the actor playing? Joey Graceffa. <laughs> AKA Joey Graceffa. Yeah. I thought ahead. I know. We would have had Joey come in right now with no shirt, a net, and a sorting hat. <laughs> Finnick, I'm not sure which house Finnick would be in, but he's I, a charmer. He's a charmer, but I also know that he would have won the second task very easily in Harry Potter. He would have been, <laughs> he wouldn't have even needed the gillyweed. He's just a great swimmer. He's That's like, right. He's like Michael he would Phelps. have joined forces with the mer people. If I had to pick a house for Finnick, I would probably go with Ravenclaw. Ravenclaw? <laughs> really? Yeah, that's kind of, I don't know. Yeah, I didn't expect that. He's smart because he plays like he's not. I think, I think Finnick is a Hufflepuff also. Really? Because, yeah, yeah. Oh, his loyalty because to Annie might be very, his defining very, trait. very, I mean, what's more defining for Finnick than that other than his abs, which are very defined. He doesn't use the information he has about the capital and about snow until he absolutely has to, and it's not like no, he's so he's true. moving chess pieces around the whole time, uh, like like a character like Hamish is. He right. just kind of stumbles into it. I, I don't know why I didn't immediately think of that because he's right. also very just. I feel like he's one of the most fair and just characters in a series full of characters that are utterly unlikable. Everybody loves Finnick, which is pretty Hufflepuffy. Finnick, Hufflepuff. Finnick, Hufflepuff. This one is really really hard. I don't know if we're gonna be able to figure this one out, but I think together and with you guys in the comments below, we can probably figure this one out. What house is President Snow in? I'm sorry, obviously President Snow, the, the worst evil evil of all the evils like, is definitely in Slytherin with the manipulation and the poisoning and the bad breath. Very bad example of the good Slytherin. Yeah. You know what I mean. A like bad he, example of a. He's a good example of a bad. Slur. Like him as a. I like yeah, to hate no, him. Yeah, no, me too. Me I enjoy too. hating him. But really, what I was actually going to say. Next up, a very complex character. It's definitely going to be a big spoiler if you have not read Mockingjay, but read Mockingjay. It's the leader of District 13, President Coin. Coin. Where do you think we should put Coin? I think Gryffindor. Really? I would definitely say that she's a Slytherin. I think her style of leadership is very different from Snow's, mm -hmm. and Gryffindor and Slytherin have two distinct styles of leadership. I think that Coin fits Gryffindor's huh. better than 
Slytherins. I guess that's true. I mean, I, the thing about Coin that I like is that I can see why she is the person she is. Just as I think Snow is a good example of a bad Slytherin, I think that Coin is a good example of a bad Gryffindor. Oh, that's an interesting point. But she's not really very much like Peter Pettigrew or anything like that. She's not a coward. She just that's is using her power That's the thing about the books is we don't see many bad Gryffindors in the books, but we know they're out there because, because the Gryffindor qualities can easily translate to negative extremes. Oh. And I think... See, sometimes, you don't want to hear anything bad about Gryffindor. Sometimes I think we start too early. <laughs> all the houses have their pros and cons, their pluses and negatives, their bad parts and their good parts. And I think that coin epitomizes the bad parts of Gryffindor. We admit that. I think there are a lot of bad parts to Gryffindor. They don't know how to plan things. They don't think ahead. Even Hermione, who's like the best <laughs> at everything, still can't plan ahead. Just get a That's planner. True. Just get a planner, guys. Like, it's so easy. Get, you buy your, your Star Kid planner, you write down what you're going to do. Last and, but definitely not least. My boy, Cinna. With the gold eyeliner. What's his last name? I don't know. Cinna. Cinna, come Cinna. forward. Here's the thing. He's so mysterious. He is mysterious. I, I feel like there's a lot we don't know about him. He is willing to, to buck the system and be himself. And in a lot of ways, is the kind of incendiary explosion that starts the revolution even before Katniss does. Absolutely. So incendiary. He's, I think yeah. he's a Griffin Claw. Yeah, that's what I, I was going to say. I see parts of Gryffindor that's and I see parts of Ravenclaw. I think he could go either way. He yeah. might be a hat stall. That Potterboard vote. Yeah, have. get this glossary going <laughs> in the description below. I like him a lot and I like how brave he is and how he's willing to put himself out there. So and brave. I like what he says about... But he's also so genius. He is brilliant. One thing that he does that is really brave is he focuses attention on himself, meaning that if he does something revolutionary, he knows he is the only one who will get hurt from it because everyone knows who's responsible, which I think is a very Gryffindor characteristic. It's something I could see Harry doing, putting Definitely. himself out there for his friends. The aspect of Ravenclaw not wanting to be part of a group. They want to stand out from the crowd. They're kind of right. loners. And his place in the revolutionary group is a very Ravenclaw one. It requires him using his brain to create things. Can we all agree that if they were going to cast Lenny Kravitz as Cinna, the least they could have done was have him sing Stand Out by Powerline in in the room when he was putting the Mockingjay pin on her. I would have, I think the movie could have been better. Definitely. If there had just been a little bit of Definitely. goofy movie That's in all there. it needed. Come on, The Hunger Games. <laughs> Hunger Games! Well, I think we got a lot done today. I think we sorted some important characters. I think we learned a lot. Make sure to let us know in the comments uh, where you think all of these characters would be sorted in your world. And thank you very much, Whitney, for doing this. Um, I hope that you guys enjoyed the first edition of Sorted. Make sure to check out the other half of it over on Whitney's channel. And uh, let us know in the comments below what other fandoms, what other universes, what other characters you would like to see us sort in future editions of Sorted. There's so many universes we can choose from. Infinite. So help us choose. <laughs> Alright, until I see you next, be brilliant.